What is up people, I hope we are all keeping well and welcome back to the channel. The title of this series is The Power Building Chronicles, but there may be some of you wondering like, you know, what is power building? And like, like the name would entail, it essentially is a mixture between powerlifting and bodybuilding. In this video, I'm gonna go through how you would essentially set up your training to become a power builder. But I do wanna preface it by saying it is not the best type of training to do if you wanna be the best at powerlifting or if you want to be the best at bodybuilding. It is a type of training which is gonna allow you to essentially get the best of both worlds, but you won't be the best at either of them specifically. First off, we need to kind of think of, oh, well, we're doing power building, so we obviously need to incorporate the power lifts, but we also want to incorporate some bodybuilding work. I think the easiest place to start here is exercise selection. Obviously, we're gonna have the power lifts in our squat, so our bench, our deadlift. Some people may like to include the likes of overhead press as well. Now, we can obviously incorporate them as part of our bodybuilding work, but if we're thinking about having competitive powerlifting goals, we do want to ensure that we at least have the squat, bench, and deadlift. With strength training, and specifically for powerlifting or the power lifts, it is really important that we do have them within the training program because strength is specific to the skill that you are going to train. You cannot get better at doing a squat without doing a squat. You can't get better at doing a bench without doing a bench press. Doing a machine chest press or doing a leg press are not gonna have the same carry over to those lifts the same way getting good at a squat will carry over to a leg press. When it comes to the two goals that we have here, by with powerlifting and bodybuilding, we obviously have the likes for a squat, bench, and deadlift, and they're gonna make up part of the actual program itself. But how do we get stronger, and then how do we get bigger? We need to look at strength first before I think we go over to the likes of hypertrophy. Getting stronger is gonna be a consequence of getting your muscles bigger, getting neurologically adapted, so your ner nervous system to being able to transmit high forces. And then there is also gonna be the skill component. Because as I mentioned, the likes of you won't be able to get good at squatting by doing leg press, squatting is a skill. So we need to practice skills frequently. Similar to if you're learning how to drive, you wouldn't only go out and drive once per week or once per month. You're not gonna learn how to drive very quickly. If you want to drive and get good at driving, you need to do it frequently. It is a skill. And the squat bench and deadlift are the exact same. So that may kind of lead us on to thinking that, you know, it would actually be quite good to practice these skills quite frequently. And also it'd be quite important for us to practice these skills in a rather fresh state. So we already have some kind of idea here as to we want to practice this skill relatively frequently which is going to affect our volume and it's going to affect our training frequency we want to pr practice this somewhat in a fresh state which is going to then have it come at a different stage within the exercise sequence and then we also want to have it in a way that is going to drive the neurological adaptations that are required to express forces at a high degree strength is specific to the test that we're doing but also to specific loads so if we are thinking about getting strong we're thinking about getting strong uh, rep ranges potentially sub five so between one rep one rep maxes all the way to five rep maxes so to get better at those specific tests we do need to train with higher levels of intensity which means then if we are looking to allocate some volume to our squat bench and deadlift to get strong at those we need to train them again with a high level of frequency with a high level of intensity we also want to train them relatively fresh too, which is gonna mean that we also want to measure the relative intensity that we're going to be doing. If we stick with our strength training components of our power building program, first and foremost, we know that we have to have our squat, bench, and deadlift. We know we want to train them frequently. We know we want to train them at a high level of intensity. We also know we want to tra train them with high enough relative intensity that allows us to perform the skill with sufficient loading, but not so much that we are gonna be learning that skill in a proper way because from the research, it will be pretty clear that if we are pushing our squats very, very close to failure or our SPD movements close to failure, that can lead to worse strength outcomes because it increases neuromuscular fatigue. With our strength training lifts, let's talk about volume. With our strength-based movements for volume, we ideally want to be training them for five to 12 sets per week. 
five would be at the lower end of the range however we do know from research like from dr packer his research on minimum effective dose that you can even get strength training benefits with even lower volumes than five sets per week and only do three sets with maybe a high intensity single one per week to still drive some strength adaptations however if you're looking to maximize your strength adaptations doing five to twelve sets per week would be ideal now with this with the likes of five to twelve sets how could we spread that out across the week to allow us to get better at the scale well we know if we are training all of our volume on one day that's obviously not going to lead us to being able to practice that skill too well but we're also not going to get an opportunity to perform all of that volume with our best efforts so with that we probably want to spread this over about two to three days now when we look at the likes of bench press or any upper body press movement if you're looking to get strong at that we probably ideally want to practice that skill at least three times per week with the likes of squats and deadlifts for the frequency we you could probably get away with doing two times per week and get fantastic results. Having this spread of volume across the week with frequency allows us to get better quality sessions with that actual volume, but it also allows us to kind of vary the intensity that we train them at. Some of the days we could be working with a slightly higher rep target and a slightly lower intensity range, or on other days we could keep it specific to our strength training goal and have a higher intensity day where we're maybe working at 85 plus percent and then the other days we're operating between the 75 potentially to 85 percent intensity range having a, sp a split of training volume in this manner allows you to have at least one day where you're practicing the skill in the strength training based format of operating at high intensities closer to your to your one rep max but the other day could serve as more of a kind of hypertrophy stimulus day where you are still practicing that skill potentially getting specific adaptations to perform that skill in a certain rep range that's going to be more productive for you accumulating more volume which could contribute to more muscle mass gains without the additional nervous system fatigue that can come from utilizing high intensities very frequently. In regards to how hard we should train when we are operating with these squat bench and deadlift patterns, we ideally don't want to train to failure. Train to failure with these movements is just a bad idea. There was a review that came out last year from Landon Hickman, which reviewed the velocity loss relationship between strength outcomes and hypertrophy outcomes. When it looked at the strength outcomes, those who had lower than 25% velocity loss from their first to last rep had better strength training outcomes because within the session they did not experience as much neuro neuromuscular fatigue and then as well that led to better long-term adaptations when it came to strength training. For hypertrophy however, those who had a greater than 25% velocity loss during training tended to have better hypertrophy outcomes and this could potentially be because they actually accumulate more volume or also because potentially their type 2 muscle fibers or higher threshold motor units are potentially getting more stimulation or getting that little bit more kind of tax or maybe there's something that's special about addition, that additional fatigue for inducing hypertrophic stimulus. However, training the failure for hypertrophy even is not completely necessary. With training intensity and hypertrophy, we can stay at even before reps in reserve from failure and still make pretty good gains. So I think now we've pretty much covered the powerlifting side of the power building program. You would ideally have your lifts in there for five to 12 working sets per week. You would have that spread over two to three days per lift. And then you would also be operating between 75 to 85 plus percent of your one rep max and ideally you would not be training them all the way to failure you probably look to maybe keep at least one to two reps in reserve most of the weeks throughout your training block you ideally want to be using those heavy loads as well because heavy loads are going to be most specific to you being able to actually get strength outcomes because we know that if you are operating at lower intensities they will not contribute to one rm strength the same way the higher intensities will so when it comes to our hypertrophy training we know that we can get away with a little bit more freedom in how we go about this so hypertrophy is a less specific adaptation compared to strength 
because it can be achieved through a variety of ways once we are satisfying a set number of criteria. Ideally, we want to ensure that our training is getting relatively close to failure and ideally we should be activating the likes of these higher threshold motor units. Essentially a motor unit is a neuron innervating a muscle fiber. The muscle fibers that have the greatest potential to grow are the type 2 muscle fibers. And these type 2 muscle fibers, they are going to be activated with loads of 80% or more. So the likes of strength training work are probably already getting sufficient activation of those motor units and muscle fibers already. However, with the likes of hypertrophy training, we don't necessarily always need to use these very heavy loads. We can use loads all the way from 30% of our 1RM max all the way up to 80% of our 1RM max, for example. That would be practical to use for a hypertrophy rep range without accumulating extra nervous system fatigue. Now, this is a huge range of intensity, okay? 30% of our 100 max all the way up to 80% or so, okay? That does have its practical limitations. If we know we're looking to satisfy these criteria of activating these high threshold motor units, activating the type 2 muscle fibers, we also want to get to a point where we are getting close to failure. And that means then our rep speed is going to have to slow down. As I mentioned already, having greater velocity loss between your first and last rep, that's probably going to lead to better hypertrophic outcomes. With that, we have to think in the practical terms of if we are using loads that are 30% over 100 max, how many reps are we accumulating before we get to that point where our rep speed starts to slow down and what becomes a limiting factor in that regard too for a lot of people one thing that is going to allow, let them down is their threshold of pain as well as their cardiovascular capacity because anytime we start to go above 10 12 15 reps we are going to start to induce the likes of metabolic stress which metabolic stress does play a role in inducing hypertrophy outcomes however some people will not be as conditioned to tolerating the pain of the buildup of acidosis or the buildup of hydrogen ions within the muscle and there's also going to be the cardiovascular component anytime we are pushing an exercise past the 30 seconds minute plus mark we're going to be tapping into our aerobic energy system which is going to help to provide energy throughout the set if you're not in a fit cardiovascular state that may limit the mental volume that you can get however using loads that low and accumulating reps that high is going to be as i mentioned impractical but it will also make up a very small percentage of a training program if it is going to be programmed ideally probably no more than the quarter of your training program the rest should be kind of geared towards utilizing loads that are between six to 15 reps so we have this kind of range here that we can operate in especially if we're trying to keep our goal within the power building framework of utilizing loads for a high periphery work that are going to be between 6 to 15 reps we obviously have the likes of our volume taken up with our squat bench and deadlift patterns we also know that they're going to play a prime role within our program but we are hypertrophy we obviously have this broad spectrum of criteria that we can look to use because we only have to essentially satisfy the criteria of getting slow rep speeds and activating the high threshold motor units and the type 2 muscle fibers but which i should mention that the primary mechanism that this is triggering essentially is mechanical tension which is essentially the primary driver of hypertrophy we need to consider okay well to accumulate enough of this mechanical tension we know that we need want to ideally operate between the kind of 6 to 15 rep range which is going to make it practical we know that we have our power building lifts that are probably going to contribute somewhat to our mechanical tension but then with everything else how do we go about the more bodybuilding side of this actual training program so with bodybuilding we need to consider as opposed to looking at lifts for our volume we want to consider body parts so what body parts are we looking to increase the size of well, what body parts do we need to bring up? Well, let's think about what body parts are not really hit that well by the likes of our power lifts. So we have the likes of our back, we have the likes of our side delts, we have the likes of our short head of our hamstrings, we have the rectus femoris, we have our calves, we have abs, our arms. So there is a lot of areas here that are not necessarily directly trained by the powerlifts themselves. So we do want to make sure that we do have exercises within these programs to cover them. So if we go back to the back, we could have the likes of our rows, we could have plenty of machine base work there for our back too, pull ups, pull downs for our delts, primarily the side delts. We could look at doing a ton of side raises, lateral raises, our anterior delts and our rear delts. Well, they're probably gonna get covered 
to our pressing for our front delt and we're accomplishing some rows we're going to be doing some rear delt work too with the likes of our hamstrings we can look at doing some leg curls which you're going to train the short head of the biceps femoris a little bit more diligently with the likes of erectus femoris which is one of the heads of the quads which crosses the hip and the knee which is not going to get trained when we're doing the squats we can add in leg extensions with the likes of calves calf raises we can add in the likes of our ab exercises too and then different types of arm exercises all right so we have all of these kind of areas that we can look to kind of bring up but how much volume should we dictate towards these body parts well ideally we want to look at around 10 to 20 sets per muscle group per week okay and this is gonna this is a huge variation in ranges similar to the rep range primarily because it's gonna be very individual based. People who are new to the gym, they can probably get away with lower volumes. People who are further into the game, they may need higher volumes. But then again, volume needs will change over, over your life course. And again, some newbies even may be better off with having higher volumes because maybe they cannot train to a sufficient degree of intensity that they will need to get the most out of those lower volumes maybe they meet need higher volume to get more kind of practice in at lifting and get practice in at pushing themselves close to the limits which is going to be practical for a hypertrophy stimulus similar to the likes of our strength training lifts if we have this broad spectrum of sets we have all these different muscle groups to hit how can we feasibly go about kind of splitting that up so ideally with this 10 to 20 sets that you're going to be performing per muscle group you would want to spread it out over the course of a couple of days now i think it is probably best to again go towards the two to three times per week to train a muscle group or simply train it as often as it can recover if it is an area that you want to bring up specifically everybody's going to have their areas that they have stronger body parts which may not necessarily need as much love than other ones and the ones that don't that are lagging you can hit them a little bit more frequently providing that they are recovering well enough now one thing that we can actually benefit from by training these muscle groups more frequently is more frequent muscle protein synthesis spikes that are induced by exercise obviously through diet we can induce muscle protein synthesis but we can do this specifically through resistance training on a specific body part and that will potentially help or lead to greater muscle gains down the line and similar to the likes of our power lifts by splitting up our training volume across this way also it allows us to get potentially some better exercise variation but also allows us to get more quality volume in with that muscle group. If you just train all 20 sets of chest on one day, a lot of those sets towards the end are just gonna be junk volume, they're not gonna be productive, versus if you split that over the course of two to three days, you will probably have much higher training quality, you probably be accumulating more volume, you could probably use more load, and potentially get better benefits that way. Now with the likes of our, our hypertrophy training, we obviously have the idea now that we have all these body parts that are not going to be hit with our power lifts we ideally want to have this volume this 10 to 20 sets per week that is distributed between those muscle groups maybe some more on lagging body parts than others maybe less volume if you're a beginner and higher volume if you are more advanced but again you'll need to trial this over time to see what type of volume it sets at you my kind of best recommendation is to start in the lower end and work from there if you do not see tangible change after, after four weeks on 10 sets increase your volume by 10 percent and with that with those 10 to 20 sets we have these rep ranges that we're going to be working within so we have the 6 to 15 rep range which i think we should do the majority of our work within we could potentially do a small bit of work within the four to six rep range if we are operating on some of our lifts like our barbell row an overhead press a pull-up a leg press for example ideally we probably want to keep any of our sub six work for the likes of our squat bench and deadlift and then maybe another quarter of the work that we're going to do in totality maybe we could have that between 15 to 30 reps but again this should make up a small percentage of your overall program you're going to get the most bang for your buck by doing reps between the 6 to 15 rep range and then in regards to how hard we should train when we are trying to achieve this hypertrophy stimulus or our bodybuilding goals well it's really going to come down to personal preference in a sense because we know that you can achieve 
the same results by using a high volume, moderate intensity program and leaving some reps in reserve, or you can essentially train to failure with lower volumes and get hypertrophic stimulus. But if we are thinking about our powerlifting goal here, if we are training all our bodybuilding work close to failure, that is gonna increase the amount of neuromuscular fatigue and just training fatigue in general that we're gonna accumulate, which could negatively impact the likes of our powerlifting work. And also we need to think of, the closer we train to failure, the more work our connective tissue needs to do to repair. And connective tissue repairs very slowly compared to the likes of muscle tissue as well. So if we are hammering our connective tissue with the likes of our powerlifts in the higher intensities as well as our bodybuilding work with high intensity and training all the way to failure that may further compromise our overall outcomes for the training program so we may end up getting the worst of both worlds we run the risk of getting injured more frequently and we also run the risk of just not getting as strong as we potentially want to so that's essentially how we set up our volume intensity and frequency for achieving ideal outcomes with a power building program now what are other things that we need to kind of consider well we need to consider how we're going to split that up across the week so i think for most part for most people if they're looking to implement this style of training operating between four to six times in the gym per week would be ideal so the way i'm running at the moment is i have a six day training program where i have three day split a rest day and then a three day split and the way it runs is i've got a squat day a bench day deadlift day rest squat bench deadlift i operate each lift two times per week except bench which are three days and one of those bench press days i do alongside a deadlift too this is just to ensure that i get in that relative amount of frequency that i need to make sure that i'm progressing with the likes of the lifts themselves i'm also operating some type of variation across the week so i have my competition days which my competition squat my competition bench my competition deadlift but i'm also running a pause squat i'm also running a deficit deadlift and i'm also running a tempo bench as well as a medium grip larson press utilizing these variations is allowing me to essentially target weak links within the lifts while still giving me some specific volume towards improving the comp competition lift itself. And then for the likes of my bodybuilding work, my bodybuilding work essentially makes up the rest of the program. The power lifts are the only lifts of my program where I am actually operating sub five reps with. For the likes of my squats, and the likes of my deadlifts, and the likes of my bench, I'm operating sub five for all of them. And with the likes of my bodybuilding work, which makes up the rest of my program is all dictated towards body parts that I want to improve, specifically like the likes of my delts, the likes of my quads. By having this six day training split, it is allowing me to get in the amount of volume that I need to progress because I'm at a stage where unfortunately I just need that much volume to actually make changes in terms of muscle mass outcomes however if i was primarily focused on strength i could definitely get away with a lot less volume in total and i could probably progress just as well off a four day training split so the more volume that you need the more training days you could potentially need to do to kind of fit in as much productive work as you need to do to progress now with power building because people who do this type of training like myself who may have mixed goals the actual way that you perform this training program over time may need to be periodized to what your specific goal is at that time. So at the moment, my goal is not really kind of specific and the deadline for when I'm gonna compete in either sport is so far down the line that I don't necessarily need to have my powerlifting training as uber specific as it would be coming up close to a meet or similar to my bodybuilding work. When I'm coming up to my next powerlifting meet, which I plan to do in potentially July, what I will essentially do is I'll look to reduce my overall bodybuilding work in terms of volume, reduce the intensity of it, and then I'll start to increase the specificity of the likes of my powerlifting work by adding in the likes of top singles or adding in some more kind of higher intensity work throughout the week. When it comes to my bodybuilding competitions, similar to what I did last year, when it comes to a point that the powerlifts become unreasonable to do from a fatigue perspective, then I'll start to reduce those because last year, as my leverage has changed my actual connective tissue and my fatigue perception was just increasing without me necessarily getting much of a benefit from a muscle building standpoint or a muscle retention standpoint but it was actually just adding more 
more fatigue to my day in general. So that is pretty much that. That is power building from my end uh, explained or at least my interpretation of it. So I hope this video helped. I hope this has given you some kind of direction as to how you can take your training if you are not sure if you want to compete in either sport or if you just want to get bigger and stronger like I do. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to give it a like, make, make sure to share with a friend and make sure to subscribe and let me know what you thought in the comments. But anyway, that's it for me. I'll chat to you in the next one.